Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today I thought I'd film the video questions I usually avoid answering. I saw this floating around YouTube and I thought why not make the pet version of it? So I asked you on Instagram to send me questions that I usually avoid answering and I sorted through all of them and I decided on some that I feel like I really haven't answered. If you want to take part in things like that, make sure to follow me on Instagram and let's get into the video. Have you ever accidentally caused a guinea pig to be sick, pass away due to a mistake? So <laughs> going right in with the heavy questions. Um, no, but I had the feeling that we should have let go of a guinea pig earlier than when we actually did. You sometimes just have the sickly feeling in your stomach when you notice that they're sick that this is it. Obviously you don't want to let go of a guinea pig too soon if it could be safe. But then I ended up being in the situation that I had to let go of the guinea pigs a couple of weeks later. And so the couple of weeks in between involved suffering for the guinea pig. Um, there were points where I should have let a guinea pig go but thought well maybe we could still save them and I should have just stuck with my gut feeling. Something that a lot of people ask was do you want kids or do you have kids or when are you going to have kids are you engaged are you married uh, lots of questions about this this family life kind of topic so i got married last year also someone asked how long we've been together and we've been together for eight years and we do not have kids um but yes eventually we do want to have kids also someone asks, are you going to stop making videos once you have kids uh, or once you have a baby? And no, I'm not going to stop making videos once I have a baby. I'm going to continue with the videos because I'm very, very, very happy with this aspect of my life. Um, so I definitely want to continue it and I do think it is a nice change from changing diapers or so I would assume because I do not have kids. <laughs> Who is your favorite piggy? That question came up a lot too, and also quite a few people told me, don't answer everyone, uh, which, fair enough, because I always answer everyone. You do love all of your guinea pigs, and picking a favorite is always, it, it sounds worse than it is, um, but like if we take all of the guinea pigs that I've ever owned, that ever been on YouTube, you lots of you can probably guess that my favorite was little one. I don't really think that comes as a surprise. Um, I've had the most special relationship with little one. He was just, he was just my little one. Which doesn't mean that I treated anyone differently or that I didn't love the others as much as I loved little one. But there was just something very special about the bond that I had with little one. Um, and now it is a very difficult thing to really say because Max, for example, is very new so I feel like he didn't have the chance so far to develop into a favorite guinea pig. <laughs> He's trying to talk to Gatsby again. Um, but you can probably also guess that. Favorite-wise, it's probably either Nugget or Gatsby. These two are my little snuggle bucks. And um, Nugget is more like my husband's guinea pig. Uh, the, this it would actually be the next question, the guinea pig's favorite human, you are your husband. Nugget definitely likes my husband more than she likes me. Nugget is just really focused and obsessed with my husband. Um, they have a special bond. My husband was also the one who tamed Nugget. Like as soon as he's in the room, Nugget ignores me. Um, so I would probably say that I have a very special relationship with Gatsby at the moment. Also because Gatsby was the one who got tame the day that little one passed away. He, she just suddenly decided that she was okay with me petting her and like touching her nose. Um, so I feel like there's a very special bond between Gatsby and me because of that. Even though Gatsby is not necessarily the most human focused guinea pig there is. When are you going to have babies and introduce them to the piggies? Um, I don't think you can introduce babies to piggies for a while because I don't think they even see that well that they could really make out what a guinea pig is um, but um, I think we might have babies soon what do you do for work so I think I mentioned that in a Instagram Q&A a week ago or so but I've never mentioned it on YouTube so I have an offline job that I usually only mention as the offline job and I work at a university and I'm doing a PhD. And my contract runs out this year. 
um, the first half of this year. Um, but I don't think that I'm going to be ready to hand it in the second my contract runs out. But hopefully this year I'll be able to hand it in. And yeah. Are you using your guinea pigs for followers and aren't actually as invested in them as you seem? No, I'm actually as invested in them and probably more invested in them as it seems. I spent so much time with the guinea pigs and when I'm not spending time with the guinea pigs, I talk about the guinea pigs or look at photos of the guinea pigs and the best way to get me talking is to ask me a question about my guinea pigs. Uh, that is the easiest way to get to know me. I just really love to talk about them and I think everyone who knows me knows that I have guinea pigs. I don't think <laughs> you can know me and not know that about me. Would you do a live video chat with your fans and their guinea pigs? This is something that I have been planning for a really long time. Like I really want to do YouTube lives with like the little live chat um, next to the live stream. But I find it very hard to like schedule it because I know that a lot of my subscribers are in the US and I'm in Europe. So we kind of have like a scheduling problem if I do it during the week. A lot of people are at work or in school if I do it in the evening. If I do it in the morning, everyone's asleep, obviously. Um, and then if I do it in the morning, everyone who's in Europe um, goes to work or goes to school. So I probably have to schedule it sometime on the weekend, perhaps. And then do it like in the evening Europe time and hope that everyone from the US is awake at 10 or 11 o'clock so that most people had the opportunity to join in. Um, but I definitely, I still plan on doing that, kind of like a resolution for this year to really get going with this one. Do you wish you could upgrade your guinea pig's cage? Constantly. I would love to just make the cage bigger and better and just give them way more space and like the free roaming thing was kind of a way of doing that without actually changing something about the cage because my husband's reaction Every time I mention that I want to increase the size of this cage is not that positive because he says that they're already taking up most of the living room. I, I have big plans for the guinea pig's cage actually because I do plan on moving at one point. It's just that rent is unbelievably expensive where I live and also it has increased so much um, and we currently live somewhere where because you live here for a while they're only allowed to like up it a certain percentage every year. Getting a bigger apartment would just be a huge financial thing. Um, but I do have plans for like at some point moving, having more space and then having a way bigger guinea pig cage. I want all I also want them to have outside space. So like I have a lot of plans in my head um, that are just not possible this year. But next year for sure there are big plans for like upgrading everything and Having even more space for them, having outside space for them, perhaps adding more guinea pigs. I, that, there's, a, there's a whole second world in my head of what's going to happen in the future. Why do you use half fleece, half wood shavings? Okay, so the reason for that is that I find both beddings have advantages and disadvantages. With the fleece liners, I feel like if you have the hay rack on the fleece liner, you basically have to wash them every single day, or at least the fleece liner that the hay rack is on. So I kind of like having the best of both worlds. So as you can see, I have fleece liners in one half of the cage where there isn't a hay rack and where the guinea pigs love to relax. And the advantage of the fleece liners are definitely that you can just put them in the washing machine. They're relatively easy to clean and the guinea pigs love to snuggle on them. The advantage of the bedding on this side is that I personally find it way easier to have a hay rack on bedding. The guinea pigs also love to snuggle on bedding, so some guinea pigs really prefer to stick their feet into fresh bedding right inside the space. So by having both sides, I feel like every guinea pig can choose what they prefer. And also I have the best cleaning experience. So I find that the entire cage is quite big and like sweeping up all of the mess every single day for the entire cage would be a lot of work and I just... I just find it time-wise just best to like do the fleece part once a day and then do the bedding part every five days. When I do the wood shavings part, I also wash my fleece liners. So I wash the fleece liners every five days or so. And this works up. Sorry, Nugget, I just dropped the questions. 
This works out really well, but I also think that it's a very personal decision, so everyone has to find what works best for them. I'm really lucky in the sense that I found wood shavings that I really like. I have dust extracted bedding. Using regular wood shavings from the supermarket, I probably would have changed to fleece. Are you living in Germany? If yes, where? So I'm living in the south of Germany. Um, next to me is France and below me is Switzerland. But I live in Germany. If you pull up a map on Google, you can kind of see the area that I live in. And um, I don't really want to say the city, but yeah, that's the general area. <laughs> it is being really adorable. Also something that comes up a lot is why do you not show your husband in your videos? The simple answer is he doesn't want me to. My husband doesn't have a social media job. He doesn't do anything on YouTube. He has a life that is completely offline. He works a regular offline job in a sense. And he doesn't want me to show his face on YouTube. <laughs> At one point I had the idea that he could film a guinea pig vlog like without showing his face or anything just like having the voice in the background because I thought that would be really interesting. But he also doesn't want to do that because he says he feels uncomfortable talking in front of the camera all the time. So I'm just respecting his wishes in the sense that he just really doesn't want to be on camera. Would you put your guinea pigs through expensive and invasive surgery? That really depends on what my vet would advise me. If it improves the quality of life, uh, or it prolongs their life and they have a good life, definitely I would totally put them through expensive and invasive surgery if the risk was okay-ish. If my vet told me that they don't think that the surgery would work and that I should really heavily think about whether I'm doing the surgery for me or the guinea pig, then I probably wouldn't do it. Um, so I, ne I wouldn't necessarily like decided on the points of expensive or invasive, I would probably just decide it on whether the guinea pig actually has a good improvement of life or has a prolonged life. If it's something that would only make their life better, probably like three months or so, but they would probably need two months to recover from that surgery and would be in a lot of pain, then probably not. But I would really talk that through with the vet and, and like get their professional opinion on whether it actually makes sense or not. Why do you avoid talking about the money you spent on the piggies? I actually wasn't aware that I was doing that, so not on purpose. Do you ever feel guilty for replacing a guinea pig so quickly? No. I used to, when like the first guinea pig started passing away, I did feel a sense of guilt, but now I don't really. I think about this in a very pragmatic way, so I always think that there are lots of guinea pigs in rescues that are looking for a forever home, that are looking for a nice home, that really want to be somewhere where they can stay and feel safe and like they're hurt and can be in a stable environment. And so when a guinea pig passes away, that is always very sad and it's a shock for everyone. But at the same time, it also gives one guinea pig that is out there and that is looking for a forever home the opportunity to find one. And this really helps me when it comes to thinking about the adoption process and whether it's the right time to get a guinea pig or whether there's a yucky feeling of replacement. I didn't come up with that. I read that somewhere on the internet, like someone who had fostered and adopted guinea pigs for a really long time wrote that online somewhere and it really resonated with me. And so that is my mindset when it comes to the adoption process. I used to feel guilty about it, but I feel like We've dealt with so many losses that I really got used to that mindset and I can accept it as something that makes sense to me and that like frames the whole adoption process of getting guinea pigs from rescues. Does your husband also love the guinea pigs? Yes, I've mentioned it before that Nugget is kind of his guinea pig. We didn't decide on that, it just happened. But yes, my husband loves the guinea pigs as well and um, he often talks to them or like sits with them and like interacts with them and all of the guinea pigs also like my husband. He also does a lot for them so he very often helps me clean the cage. Um, you always see him in videos when we cut the guinea pig's nails or cut the guinea pig's fur. He's always there to help me. Um, he also helps me with preparing the vegetables for the guinea pigs so 
it, it is a two people job. Um, you mainly see me on camera doing all of that, but um, I have a lot of help behind the scenes from my husband. You all, he's also the the mastermind behind creating a lot of the ideas that I have, like building the castle bridge and like the houses and everything. He's the one that I come to with a crazy plan and then he sets it in motion basically. What is the worst thing about owning guinea pigs? For me personally, it's probably the mess. I feel like I'm constantly cleaning. I don't think it's necessarily a, a bad thing in the sense that it would make me consider not having guinea pigs because I think the positives outweigh that by a ton but still the worst thing is probably the mess i'm just constantly cleaning i'm just i just have fur on all of my clothes uh, if i'm wearing black yoga pants i just have to pick fur and hay and whatever off my yoga pants because as soon as i wear them for like 10 seconds something finds their way on it um i've also once went to work and had like a little bit of hay in my hair so i like bedding definitely the mess why don't you show yourself often so I started off my channel with showing my face. If you watch the first few vlogs that I have online, you always see my face. I'm constantly talking to the camera. And, and then the channel grew and I suddenly had a weird feeling in my stomach thinking, wow, that's a lot of people watching. And so I had like a phase where I completely stopped showing my face. That has also changed again, so I'm, I'm showing my face if I'm doing like a reaction video or like a, a Q&A, I very often show my face, um, so it's not like it's hidden. I really like the mix that I have going on at the moment of like having videos where I show my face or where I do like a reaction video and you have more emphasis on me talking um, and seeing my face and only have the guinea pigs in the background and then you have the vlogs and like most of the info videos where it's a very where like the focus is on the guinea pigs and you see like footage of them in close-ups and everything. Um, so I do like the mix that I have going on. I'd say that currently it's still 90-10 perhaps, so 90% guinea pig focus, 10% you also see me. Um, but that is something that I'd, I wouldn't have a problem shifting. Now I'm at a point where I'm just very happy with what I'm doing on this channel and I'm, I'm very proud of the guinea pig community and like of so many people coming together and enjoying their love for guinea pigs. Um, I don't have that many people in my offline life who also own guinea pigs so I love the space that we have here. I'm just happy where everything's at at the moment so I definitely feel more comfortable showing my face. Would you trade your guinea pigs for a dog? No. I wouldn't trade in my guinea pigs for anything. Why do you keep adding to the herd? Why do you need so many piggies? Save some for the rest of us. So I have five guinea pigs and the, I feel like the cage is big enough for five guinea pigs and that is a herd size that I like. So as long as the guinea pigs are in this cage, in this apartment, the herd size will stay at five, which means if one of them unfortunately has to leave us, there's going to be a new guinea pig because there's always going to be five guinea pigs in this cage. Which piggy do you think you're most like, like personality-wise? I sometimes wish I could have 5% of Gatsby's I don't care about anything mentality because Gatsby is I think a very happy guinea pig because she only does what she wants to do and I, and I would really like to have 5% of that but I feel like probably perhaps I'm closest to Nugget personality-wise on the one hand, I'm a people pleaser, just like Nugget is. Then Nugget also, if she really doesn't want to do it and she's just annoyed, she will just sit there and stare at you and teeth chatter at you. And I feel like I have that too. How about your husband? Okay, that's a difficult question. So my husband has joined us now and he says he cannot pick which guinea pig personality he is. He says he might be a little bit of Gatsby because he definitely cares less about what other people think of him than I do. <laughs> but this whole question just turned into a who am I conversation. <laughs> Comment down below which guinea pig you think we are. Um, <laughs> maybe my husband is Lumi because he never wants to be on camera and always hides on the second level. <laughs> which is kind of what is happening in this video because you see four guinea pigs and number five is up there on the in the fleece forest and hiding from everyone. So perhaps my husband is Lumi. 
Well, I think this is going to be it for today's video because it's already pretty long. If you like these types of videos, let me know because that was fun to film and I would have also totally filmed this with me in front of the camera, but the guinea pigs were so cute today that I just really wanted to have them on camera. And um, also let me know whether you would prefer to have more videos also of me and not only of the piggies. We could also totally do like a mix and match, so have the vlogs be 90% guinea pigs and then if you see me walking around, sometimes see my face. Um, lots of different things that we could try out, just let me know what you prefer. And I hope you enjoyed this video, Max has been extra adorable right now. <laughs> And see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks.